Hey everyone, Christine Maji here. I am so excited to bring you the 2019 edition of the Best Design Tools. All these tools I personally use and love or I hear great things about them and I haven't gotten a chance to try them yet, but trust me when I say there are millions of tools out there for designers, which is great, but I'm hoping this gives you a little bit of insight into which ones are sort of rising to the top and what you can think about using for your own design process. So here we go. I also want to mention that if you really want to learn more about tools and seeing what else is out there, I have an entire page on my website dedicated just for design tools because there are so many and there are a lot of resources out there that you may not have heard of that can really help you in your process. All right, I'm gonna start in order of my typical design process and I definitely start out with brainstorming. I don't go straight to the computer. I like to use pen and paper. Sounds so archaic and old, but honestly there are no better tools in the beginning, especially than a pen, a Sharpie, a marker, some paper, some sticky notes. You can do so many things with these tools and it really helps you be creative and get ideas out there, try things fast, whiteboarding, same idea. You don't have to go to the computer to brainstorm. In fact, I recommend that you don't. These simple tools are great. Now in the beginning of my process, I like to also collect a lot of inspiration to refer to when I'm feeling stuck or when I'm getting started to kind of help kick off my ideas. And what I really love to do with all the stuff that I collect is put it all in a board. My favorite tool for these inspiration boards is Envision Boards. It is part of the Envision Suite, um, very much like a Pinterest board. You can zoom into things, you can download things, you can separate your board by categories, which is super helpful. You can invite people to your board. Pinterest boards are great too though because you do have that wealth of inspiration baked into Pinterest. So while you're there, you might as well make your own Pinterest board. Either of these options are great and really help get all the stuff you're finding helpful and inspiring into one place so you can refer back to it as many times as you need. All right, next phase for user research and outside of in-person user research, sometimes we have to make do with digital tools. And luckily for us, there are a bunch of them out there these days. Optimal Workshop has a whole suite of amazing tools that are very popular. Things like TreeJack, Optimal Sort, and Chalkmark. There's also just regular old Trello boards for card sorting. If you're doing surveys as part of your user research process, there's nothing wrong with a really good old SurveyMonkey survey. There's also Google Forms and Typeform is another one I really like as well. Now as far as information architecture, workflows, user flows, all that kind of data mapping and flow kind of work, my personal favorite is Whimsical. They keep adding new tools to their suite. They actually have a wireframing tool now in addition to their other sort of data mapping and flow type tools. There's also MindMeister, XMind. I've used both of those and they're also great. And of course you don't technically need any of these tools. You can actually actually make these flow documents yourself in something like Sketch or Figma or XD. But if you want to use something specifically made for that type of work, these tools are great. All right, so this brings me to UI tools. As you know, we have seen a proliferation of these tools in the last several years. <laughs> and while Sketch was reigning supreme for a while and is still an excellent tool, I have to say this year was the year of Figma. And I think I remember last year saying, you know, I keep hearing Figma, we'll see what happens. Uh, it happened. Honestly, I am still a huge fan of Sketch. I still think it's an excellent program. It's probably the most robust UI tool when used with all the plugins. But now that I work on a team and we all work on the same project together, I cannot get enough of Figma. Surely for the fact that it's online, you can even use it in the browser, you can have as many team members as you have in the same document working together at the same time is amazing. There's no more saving my file and saving their file and sending it back and forth and mine's outdated now and I don't know what the latest is on that piece of the project. All of that is eliminated. There's no version control. It's just auto-saved. It's honestly amazing. I love it. I love it. I also do have to mention though, Adobe XD. Even though I don't personally use it, I know a lot of people who do and really appreciate the fact they are constantly giving updates and improving it and making it better. I have a lot of respect for the Adobe team and I think it's also a great tool not to mention it, as well as Figma, have a free option making it accessible to a lot of people and I really, really love that. There are a lot of other tools out there for this type of stuff, 
but none have really risen to the top like these three have. All right, so wireframing. You can of course do wireframing in a UI tool like Figma, Sketch, XD, but there are tools specifically for wireframing that do really well. I already mentioned Whimsical. Envision also has one called Envision Freehand. They're a little more rudimentary, but it's great because you can just do something quick and dirty as if you were drawing it on a whiteboard basic shapes and boxes, but it definitely gets the job done quickly. And if you want something a lot more robust and add in some interactions, UXPin is another great tool. Now, when you wanna get into prototyping, it really depends on what kind of prototyping you wanna do, but the most popular I would say would be just using the built-in features of like a Figma or a Sketch using the Anima plugin. You can also upload any designs you've made in any program into Envision and do your interactions there. And if you wanna get really advanced with higher fidelity animations, I would recommend Framer or Marvel, although these have a little bit of a learning curve. So once you've done a design and you're ready to use or test, there are also plenty of tools out there to test your designs. At work, I use usertesting.com, which is amazing. Understandably though, this can be a very expensive tool and not everyone has access to it or has a company that's willing to pay for it. So sometimes you have to go a little more scrappy and there are definitely ways to do this. So there are meeting tools like Google Hangouts, Skype, Zoom, any kind of video call program will work. There's also a couple newer ones that just came out called Maze and Useberry. I have not personally used these tools, but I've kind of seen them cropping up, and I'm really hoping that means that in the near future there'll be programs that pop up that make user testing a lot more affordable and accessible for freelancers or for students or for people in small companies who don't have a huge user testing budget, although it is super valuable and worth every penny. But like I said, make do with what you have, use those free meeting apps to your advantage, and of course you can always do in-person interviews, which doesn't really require a tool at all. Now when you're doing these tests and your research, you probably wanna have a way to collect all of this information and data, and there are definitely some tools out there that UXers really love to use. So things like Trello, like I mentioned before, can be great for card sorting, but also just managing a project, managing a to-do list, Google Sheets, Google Docs, all those basic cloud-based programs are very widely used and very helpful. And I also wanna mention Airtable here. If you are into spreadsheets, Airtable's kind of like a spreadsheet on steroids, but also very beautiful and very helpful when collecting a lot of data. You can sort by all kinds of metrics, you can add images to things, you can tag, you can filter, you can display your data in a lot of different ways. It's a lot like Excel, but better. I'm definitely not a spreadsheet queen, but I can appreciate a good spreadsheet when I see one. And so when I have used Airtable, I have really appreciated how easy it is to use and learn, even though I'm really not a spreadsheet person. I like my lists, okay? I like lists. Bullets, Trello boards, simple. That's what I like. And the last tool I wanna to mention is for designer developer handoff. And what I mean by designer developer handoff tools is that when a designer is done with the design and it needs to be turned into working code, a developer can't really read a static flat JPEG file of a design, right? They have to understand the code that goes behind it. And so a tool like this allows them to get the attributes of every single element in a design to understand what the code is that they need to make that. And while there are a few tools out there, by far my favorite is Zeppelin. You can categorize your designs, you can tag them, you can invite plenty of people, all the developers in your company if you want, to your project and they can all see everything. It gives really accurate measurements between elements. I just find it really useful and the developers like to use it as well. So. Thanks, Zeppelin. So all in all, looking back to last year to now, not a ton has changed other than Figma taking the world by storm. That's really the biggest one. But as we have seen, tools pop up all the time. I actually saw one this morning in my inbox. It was another UI tool, like another Sketch, another Figma, again, right? So. They are constantly being developed. The existing ones are constantly being approved. And I think that's honestly great. It means we have a lot of choice. It means the best will rise to the top. It means they have a lot of incentive to make these tools really great for designers and for where the industry is going. As far as predictions for tools, I'm kind of seeing this trend toward more cloud-based programs, right? So like Figma 
being accessible by multiple people working on it at once, which is a lot different than the traditional single file, single player kind of based design program out there. Especially if you don't have a Mac, you can use it on any computer, you can have any kind of team member log in, make an account, look at the work. It's been hugely helpful just opening up the process and letting other people in. And that about wraps up my 2019 edition of Best Tools for Designers. As you know, this industry is crazy fast, so I am really curious to see what happens next year, how this list changes. I will definitely keep you posted on that. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. If you have any other tools that you love or you'd like to add to my list, please leave me a comment down below. I'm always looking to learn about new tools and see how you're using them and how they're helping you. Thank y'all so much for watching. That's all I got. See ya.